How you doing guys? Chris here. Well, I've got something special for you today. This is the tiny GPS from Nameless RC and it is tiny. This here is the BN180 and this used to be the smallest GPS you could get. And it is pretty small. Let's get a quick weight on it. I was pretty sure it's about five grams. And yeah, five grams on the dot and then with a wiring harness, you're looking at 5.7 grams. So that used to be the smallest GPS you could put on a quad. Well, this little guy's changed everything. Look at the size of that ceramic antenna. That is nothing. Ridiculous. So let's see how much this little guy weighs. 1.7 plus the harness. 2.2. 2.2 grams for a GPS. That is small. So just for comparison, I pulled out a, a dime and a euro dime. Since we're in Europe, might as well have both. So look at that. That is small. And on the package, it tells you right here what you're going to set it up for. So your protocol is U blocks. And then when you go to your ports section in BI, um, beta flight rather, you're gonna look and you're gonna manually set that to 9,600. You don't wanna put that on auto. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set up this nameless RC GPS on my flipped seven inch uh, Floss 3.0 here. And I have GPS rescue set up. I know it works pretty well. So I'm gonna, so this is pinned differently. They couldn't have made this easy, right? Couldn't have been a one for one swap. It's too bad. So this is five volt ground TX RX. This is the team black sheep GPS. So I'm going to basically unplug it and then rearrange the pins to line up with that and then do a one for one swap. Wish me luck, hope I don't screw that up. All right, and we're back and we got it, the uh, the pins all repinned and I don't recommend doing that too many times. Once you, you know, lift the plastics to put the pins in and then try to do that two or three times, your your connector is basically ruined. Might be worth it just to resolder, but for this one time I was going to do it, it it was fine. So, Anyway, I got the GPS on there. Uh, that's what it looks like. That's the old one. We're gonna go do a forced uh, GPS recovery and yeah, see if it fail safes, see uh, how long it takes me to collect satellites and uh, see if it works. See if it tries to return to a good location or not. All right, stand by, here we go. So I turned this on because I just got four satellites right now and we're at can you see that six minutes and 18 19 seconds so that's how long it took me just to get four satellites i need five to take off so hopefully this won't take too much longer all right that's it i just hit five satellites it took almost seven minutes so let's hurry up and do this test before i lose the satellite Trying to stay low so you guys can see where it is. Oh, five satellites still. The arrow is not accurate. I am straight in front of me and it says I am very far away, but it does say I'm about 30 meters away, 28, 29, 30 meters away. So it's trying, but no, it's not accurate when it comes to my location. All right, let's hit the switch. Nothing happened. There it goes. Hey, GPS rescue works. Look at that. So I'm sure there's a logical reason why I put the GPS rescue on the buzzer switch and the buzzer switch on the GPU rescue switch. But for the life of me, I can't think of what that reason is right now. 
So as you can see, it flew back in my general direction, not necessarily over top of me, but still, if it needed to regain connection with the controller, that would have been established. It kind of came to my general direction. It came back to me, but it passed me. So maybe it's because I was too close, but hey, it did something. It didn't fail safe. So we're gonna call that a win. And I see this amazing construction equipment right here too. So I think I might play around in here for a little while. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.